Welcome back everyone to your database clustering tutorial series from Caleb, the Video Mecha 2. <laughs> okay, this video we're going to be talking about load balancing. Now we discussed load balancing in the very first video, I believe it was. And essentially what that is, is you can kind of group your entire cluster into this thing called a load balancer. And then all you have to do is talk to the load balancer and it will decide where to send traffic. So it's actually super easy to set up a load balancer with cluster control and basically the entire process is automated. There's different types of load balancers, but for some of them, if you were to write a software application, you could just talk to the load balancer. If you weren't using a load balancer, you would have to manually in your code decide which nodes to read and write from. And that can make writing applications a whole lot more complex. Now, if you go over here and click this little tab thing, <laughs> you can scroll down and find somewhere in here. Oh, the first one, load balancer. And you can see there's like five options to make us have something more to think about. But <laughs> the choice that we are going to go with is proxy SQL. And feel free to look up all these and learn about them. But that's not what I'm going to talk about in this video. We're just talking about setting up a load balancer. <laughs> I wish I had the time to go into all of that, but I just don't right now. So <laughs> we'll worry about that in another video. So let's scroll down and here's all the information we're going to have to fill out. So the very first thing is what computer do you want this to be on? Now I would highly, 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 highly recommend you put it on the controller. All right. So in here, we're just going to add a password, you know, whatever. And now this database user stuff, I'm just going to skip that for now because I'm going to teach you how to configure that after you have the load balancer set up. So just leave that as is. Yes, we want to include both of these. And then lastly, there's this implicit transactions thing. And if you want to know more, you can hover over this I and you can also look up stuff on implicit transactions. Specifically, you could look up like several nines implicit transactions and it'll give you some more information. I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. So I'm just going to leave it as no. And then I'm going to click deploy. Oh yeah, I want to click no. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, so we got a new job going and we can open the activity monitor. Great, so you can see that it finished. At first it failed and I was like, oh no. But then I realized it's just my internet went out, you know, typical. <laughs> so I got it working. <laughs> and if we go back to our homepage, you can open this overview and then click nodes. And then down here, there's this new proxy SQL right here. And it says which node is part of proxy SQL. So you can click that and get all kinds of cool information and graphs and please wait loading signs. One thing I wanted to mention real quick was this host group thing. So there's two groups and the way this works is that host group 10 are readers and writers. So the databases that are in host group 10, you can write to and you can read from them. Whereas host group 20 are just readers. That information is going to be important when we create a new user. So to create a user, what we have to do is click this users tab. And now we'll click this add new user. Now we can scroll down. Now the way authentication works with proxy SQL is a little interesting. So pay attention here for a minute. You're going to have to have a user for proxy SQL and a user for the database. So if you click this add existing user, Essentially what that does is I believe it will take a user from the database and also put it for proxy SQL. Essentially when you authenticate with proxy SQL, proxy SQL is going to be like, oh yeah, yeah, this guy's allowed to do stuff. And then they're going to go into the database, use the same user and password to do stuff with the database. So the same user needs to be with proxy SQL and with the database cluster. So we can make this username something really good like, oh, I don't know. Caleb Curry, good password, and we will make it 10, and that's fine, database name, eh, it's fine. Now these grants, what you want to do is you want to decide what this user is allowed to do. So for the grants, you could type in all privileges and then click add user. And there you go. That is your brief introduction to load balancers. Now, obviously I barely scratched the surface. <laughs> if anything, I just confused you more. <laughs> Let's hope not. But obviously I can make an entire series on load balancers. It's not a small topic. <laughs> so the important thing is to understand the basics. And then if you find, hey, this is something I could really use, 
you have enough information to start researching to figure out which kind of load balancer is best for you and how to set them up properly and all that good stuff. So that's all I got for this video. The next video is going to be really, really, really cool. So please check it out. Please be sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace out.